Hello, I popped on some rouge for you to hopefully conceal the fact that daylight savings time occurred and what is sleep? I asked on my Instagram and on the community tab here on YouTube to uh, if you guys had any questions for me about postpartum labor and delivery. I don't know, it all seems weird, but I figured this is my last postpartum. Ah, all the feels. And I get random questions about it, so uh, let's just compile a video, okay? Let's see how long this lasts before the baby needs me. Alex is holding Wolfgang right now, and usually I get like 10 minutes at a time, so we'll do our best here. Also, did I say rouge? Isn't rouge blush? Don't even listen to me. I put on lipstick, but then I like tried to sheer it out because I thought this is just too much, <laughs> too much. I don't know where to start, so I'll just, I didn't like pick out certain questions, which I probably should have in hindsight, but I didn't. I actually wasn't even sure if I was gonna film this because I thought, I don't know if I'm far enough removed from the postpartum <laughs> experience. It's a lot. So uh, I got asked about labor and delivery, and I labored this time standing up, or I guess I was pushing standing up. So I got a question, how did your legs not get tired, basically? I don't know, I wasn't even thinking about my legs. And I've gotten questions like, how do you deal with contractions? Because typically, like, I okay, I went to the hospital and I found out I was eight centimeters and I thought I was like zero centimeter. <laughs> I mean, obviously I knew I was in labor. But I've shared before the best way to get through contractions. Well, first of all, especially when you're in like early labor, pretend like you're not in labor until you can't pretend that you're not in labor anymore. Like I was decorating my house for Halloween. I was making cookies and stuff, or no, I was making brownies. Whatever the heck I was making, I was feeling my contractions, but I was also like, nah, I don't know, you know, because if I would have been all consumed in that, which I was with my first uh, labor experience, and sometimes you don't have distractions. Like I've got four other kids running around. I have plenty of distractions from like what's happening. So, okay, how can I explain it? So I woke up at 3 a.m. that morning to go to the bathroom and realized, wow, I'm having contractions. These feel different than Braxton Hicks. These are, this is a real thing. If I had stayed awake and started timing my contractions or you know, just focusing on them, by the time I was in the pushing stage, I would have been exhausted. Like I got three more hours of sleep that night because I went back to bed at three, I wake up at six, well, not these days, but <laughs> back then, I woke up at six. So I had three more hours of rest for my body. So that way, when I finally got to you know transition, I was able to have that energy and sustain that. So that's tip number one. Pretend like you're not having contractions, okay? And then when you can't pretend anymore, breathe through them. Try to be as relaxed as you can, which seems ridiculous, but Try to keep your shoulders relaxed and your face relaxed. Those are the main areas I think that we hold tension. And when our shoulders are tense and our face is tense and we're ah, like that, our body is not going to progress. We need to stay relaxed. And so our body can, our cervix can you know, dilate and do all the things that it needs to do. And that's why a lot of times in labor where if a woman isn't progressing, they offer an epidural, or maybe the woman, the mom wants an epidural, give me an epidural. So their body can relax, and then oftentimes they progress pretty quickly. I, every labor and delivery experience is different, and that's why I think labor and delivery is so cool. I could talk about labor and delivery forever, and I did get questions about um, becoming, hold on, let me find it. I feel kind of bad, I should've like, I don't know, done my hair, like, look, look somewhat more presentable for you, but I feel like, honestly, this is, the most presentable you're gonna get from me nowadays. I am kind of sweating because I popped a sweater on to try <laughs> to try to look put together. Fake it till you make it, right? I'm doing my best over here, just surviving. Hey, have you considered becoming an official childbirth educator or anything along those lines in the future? Your videos and advice have helped me with my births. It got a lot of thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so I feel like I have a lot to say about this. <laughs> Maybe in the future, I would want to be a midwife or even just a doula just to help moms through childbirth. And then, of course, in becoming those things, I would have to do a lot of, you know, childbirth education. And there are courses on that. I just love 
the whole experience, pregnancy, childbirth, I think it's amazing. It truly is a miracle. Like, w come on. And I was all consumed in that world, especially when I had my first and second. Well, not so much before I had my first, but after I experienced it for the first time, there were so many things I had no idea about. So I submerged myself into like Google, of course, and research and then the birthing communities in my area and all of that stuff. And then I did placenta encapsulation for a while. And <laughs> that was fun. I got a lot of questions about encapsulating my placenta to which I did this time around kind of, and I'll explain that. I got video of it, which is really cool, so I'll share that at the end. I was going to share it in a previous video, but I was like, I don't know, this is too much for some people, so I'll share it at the end. So if you're interested in that, you can stay and hang around, but if you're not, you can be like, peace out, you know? <laughs> but that's really nice. I feel like just in general with anything, if you're interested in something, you just learn a lot about it. Not that I'm an expert in literally anything, but I just find it fascinating, so I, I, and I've been through it five times. So with each experience, you learn more, you learn as you go. And that's life, right? Life is the best classroom. <laughs> Words to live by. What was the hardest transition? Zero to one kids, one to two, etc. I don't know if I should change this shirt. We've gone too far. It really doesn't even fit me. It's like, I mean, you can't even tell that it doesn't fit me because I'm in frame, but nothing fits me these days. I did go, okay, that, we're t totally off topic, but the hashtag not really off topic because postpartum body, I'm very lenient, generous. I don't know what the proper word I should use right now is. I'm very patient with my body when it comes to like bouncing back, which I have gotten comments like, oh, you look so great. Even people I see in real life, oh, you look so great. How old is your baby? And I don't really know what people mean when they say I look great. Like I don't look tired. Are you looking close enough? Or am I just wearing five pounds of concealer? Also, I don't, uh, like the clothes I'm wearing are bigger than the clothes I wore before I was pregnant. Like does my outfit look cute that day? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I find out that, that hard when I get that kind of compliments because I don't really understand what it means. I appreciate the kindness, but it takes me a long time to get rid of the pregnancy weight. I have come to terms and I'm calling it pregnancy weight because it's not the baby weight. I had the baby, you know, my placenta. Typically, if I would have gained only, you know, 20 pounds during pregnancy, which is the baby, the placenta, the amniotic fluid, the extra blood, the weight that you gain, that's the baby weight. And then once you have the baby, you know, a few weeks postpartum, that kind of falls off. I'm five weeks postpartum right now. I actually just had my postpartum checkup this morning. Did I already say that? Who the heck knows? I'm really surprised that the baby hasn't. It's been 10 minutes. Okay, anyway, <laughs> buckle up. It's gonna be all over the place. Nothing new. What was I saying? If I had only gained that 20 pounds, li I, life would be pretty cushy right now. I'd bounce back real quick. However, I gained a lot more than that, more than double that, and uh, that's typical for me. I just pack on extra pounds, I'm okay with that. Takes a while, when I say a while, at least a year, year and a half, really two years before I, <laughs> is that a stretch? Really honestly a year and a half before I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel normal again, you know? So, uh, you know, just be patient with yourself. It took you a while to add it. It took, it took me a while to gain it and it'll take me a while to get it off. And I am also not willing to sacrifice sweets and stuff. So there's that. But, oh my gosh, am I even answering questions these days? These days. Oh, I need help. I have eliminated dairy from my diet to see if it helps with Wolfgang. I've shared that he spits up a lot more, especially a lot more than my other kids. And the pediatrician thinks it's just from overeating. I kind of think it's from overeating mostly because at his last pediatrician appointment, the amount of weight he was supposed to gain, he gained double that. So I know it's not a supply issue. I feel like around six weeks when your milk supply tapers out because that's, man, I should have organized this video. I should have organized like labor and delivery questions and then postpartum and breastfeeding, but that's not my style, I guess. All right, let's just do it. <laughs> Around six weeks, your milk supply tends to level out. So I'm hoping once I reach that six week mark that he and I will kind of become an, an agreeance about how this whole thing is working and uh, 
thing he won't be spitting up so much but for now i've eliminated dairy it's been a, over a week and he's still spitting up and i honestly think it's just overeating he comfort nurses and I comfort nurse him uh, because sometimes he doesn't take a binky. I'm not above offering a binky. He just, and I, I bought a new one yesterday and he seems to like that. So fingers crossed, although he still is spitting up and <laughs> you know. Life is just hard with a baby. Like it's a new human. They're figuring out how to live life. You're figuring out how to live life with them. Hey, speaking of that, did I even finish? I didn't even answer that question. What was the hardest transition? I am the worst. Zero, zero to one was the hardest. Your entire life changes. Your, oh my gosh, for me, it was crazy. Maybe I did start to answer that question. Nothing happened the way I was told it would or expected it to be, I, I thought I'm the youngest of five kids. I have watched every single one of my older siblings have kids, bring them up. Like I was right there. I thought I watched them grow up. I knew nothing, nothing. <laughs> I knew, oh my gosh. Okay, if there's one tip of advice I could give you was like, don't even read the pregnancy books, read postpartum books, read, well, you know what? I don't even read the book. Every kid is so different. There's no advice. <laughs> There's no advice. You're in for the ride of your life. That's when the journey really begins. The second you take that baby home and you're alone, it's just you and the baby and the baby's survival is based solely on your responsibilities. And it's a lot, That that's a lot come to terms with, you know what I mean? For me, I was 23 years old, um, you know, it's been 12 years, so I feel like having our fifth, having each subsequent child pass that, I thought, okay, well, I've been through this once, I can, you know, I kind of found my footing each and every way along the way. And with Avelina, I had no support. We had just moved back to the States and I knew no one, I had no one around. L when I say no one, I mean literally no one. Like even Alex was gone all day and all night. And it, I felt, I feel like I was overwhelmed with everything. I feel like I did, I had postpartum anxiety for sure. I thought, oh my gosh, walking downstairs with my baby, what if I trip and fall and we both die? Like everything was worst case scenario. But I didn't, I didn't know when I was going through it. You know, I had friends that I talked to, but no one that offered like advice. So I did read a bunch of books like, oh man. And this one book, I wish I could remember the name of it to share with you guys, because it is probably the book that I reference the most in my brain because I don't actually have the book. I don't even know the title of it. I know it involved an Oma <laughs> in the book. And I know it was very basic level. Like it taught, okay, there's one specific thing that I remember about the book. Is this even a Q and A or am I just rambling on? So in the book, they she talks about, well, I actually don't know if the author is a male or a female. So they talk about <laughs> the easy method. And that's that was the biggest takeaway that I, you know, have read from anything. So it basically just gives you an example of a good routine, a very basic routine um, with a newborn is just, so it's an acronym. E stands for eat. So when the baby wakes up, they eat. A is for activity. S is for sleep. Y is for you. So when the baby wakes up, they eat. You let them, you know, exercise on the floor a little bit, a little bit of tummy time, a little bit of whatever. And then you put them back to sleep because their awake periods are not very long. The window of time that they're actually awake. And then once they're asleep, you can focus on you. <sighs> really? <laughs> Not if you have other kids though, okay? <laughs> or laundry to do, or dishes, or cooking, or cleaning, all that stuff. Uh, so ideally in the book, she was like, this is when you take a shower. A shower? You mean dry shampoo? <laughs> but anyway, uh, that book was great. <laughs> Back 12 years ago when I actually read books, I don't read anymore. Okay, what was the question? <laughs> This is gonna be a long day. Okay, so that was my hardest transi transition, zero to one kids, because I didn't know anything. Um, if you, uh, I don't even know. Try to build a support system. 
Hopefully you have friends around. Family, family is the best. Do you have a mom who helps? If you have anyone in your life that is willing to help you, take, take their help. Don't say, oh, don't be polite. Just say, yes, I would love that. Thank you for giving me a meal. You want to bring me over a meal? That'd be great. Oh, you can leave it on the front door. Don't feel like you have to entertain your guests. That's another th question that I got. How do you navigate like having visitors over? Pe Ooh, this one riles me up. People who want to come over to see the baby. The baby doesn't care about them. The baby literally only cares about the mom. That is their food supply. That is the only human being they've ever known in their whole lives. It's the only scent they're familiar with. The baby only wants to be with the mom. Unless you have a very easygoing baby, which there are different types of babies. Okay, there's a grumpy baby, spirited baby, textbook baby. I don't remember. I feel like there's five different ones, but that's the, those three are the only ones I can remember. Angel baby, that's the fourth. And I feel like they're not, I, it doesn't matter. If you have a very easygoing baby and they like don't care who's holding them and they're fed and content all the time, that's amazing, good for you. I wish my babies were like that. My baby, I bought that swing. My Wolfgang hates it. Why? Please just sit in the swing for five minutes. <laughs> no, he just wants my arms. He just wants to be near me, which is fine. Like literally I read that the uh, newborn doesn't even understand that they're a separate entity from their mother until they're like seven months old or something like that. Don't quote me, Google it, do your own research. But it's something along those lines that they don't even realize. Like they know, they're so fresh and brand new in this world. So just be patient with them, be patient with yourself. And that also goes with breastfeeding too. Be really patient with that because there seems to be this understanding that breastfeeding just comes easy because it's like the natural thing to do. But breastfeeding is hard. It's hard work, it's a lot of work. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started. Especially if you're pumping. It's like double duty if you're pumping then you still have to wash and sanitize and get up and do all those things. I, I would dare say pumping is more work. <laughs> I don't know how to express my feelings, but it is a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort, it's time consuming, it's all consuming, it's worry, it's, it's such a mind game. Just be patient. Your baby's learning how to eat and all that good stuff. Do what's best for you, for your family, for your baby. Every mom is different and every mom is right. And we're all just doing the best we can. Okay, can I answer the third question? <laughs> we're like, 40 minutes in and zero questions answered. Ooh, I've heard others say that pregnancy was much more difficult in their 30s than in their 20s. Do you agree based on your experience? All of my pregnancies are very difficult. They suck. I get HG every time. So, okay, if I were to compare my pregnancies in my 30s to my 20s, they're very comparable. Like, I wouldn't say that they were different. But I also feel like my body doesn't feel older. Like I don't, I'm not waking up like a 35 year old geriatric, ugh, my back. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty active and my body is pretty young. So for me, like I didn't feel geriatric in my pregnancy, but that I feel like everyone is different in the, their experience too. I mean, even nowadays, you, women get pregnant in their 40s and have very minimal complications, if any at all. So I think it's circumstantial. For me, I, it was fine other than the HG. Like, I, ugh, I don't even, I don't think I had HG this time around. I either had very severe morning sickness or very mild HG. So I was like right on the, on the borderline. You guys know I just love Madonna. Oh, okay, I also got a question about this being our fifth and final. Actually, a lot of questions about fifth and final. Giving birth in the shower, that looks so incredible. You guys are so nice. Which way do you prefer? If I had to suggest any way to give birth to someone, obviously whatever you feel comfortable doing, where, you know, whatever position you feel comfortable in or your provider is comfortable with you being in. I enjoy giving birth in the tub, but also Meredith was my smallest baby 
but when I compare it to my birth with Wentworth, who was my largest baby, nine pounds, 11 ounces, and Meredith was seven pounds, nine ounces, I think. I gave birth to Wentworth and I was pushing and I was being coached while I was pushing. So, you know, it was very like I was on the table with an OB, like bear down, count to 10, push your herd out. And that was fine. Okay, sorry, children. But I felt like I didn't make a peep <laughs> when I was pushing him out. With Meredith, it was in the water and a bath. The water was so great for like, the pain relief, I don't wanna say pain, discomfort, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it was very relaxing, very nice, but she was also my littlest. I mean, their heads are pretty much the same size. I don't know. Wolfgang is 90th percentile in everything. I feel like his shoulders are this big. And for whatever reason, that was my hardest birth. I don't think it was because I was standing up. That wasn't a bother for me. I really enjoyed the water from the shower on my back. What was the hardest was just literally getting him out. I felt like, oh my gosh, I felt like he was so big. And I know people have bigger babies. I felt like he wasn't plump big. He was just like, his dome is massive, you know? But thankfully I didn't tear too bad. I had like a second degree tear, which is I think what I've had with all of mine. But water relief for a uh, source of pain relief, I feel like is very beneficial. But yeah, do, ha, birth however you feel comfortable. I would have loved to have a home birth or a birthing center birth, but I loved being at the hospital with the midwives. That was fantastic. The thing I don't love is after you deliver, that fundal massage, top notch, best massage I've ever paid for. <laughs> okay, I have to make this fast. It won't be uh, <laughs> this portion anyway. So I forgot where I was, but as I was nursing the baby, putting him to sleep, I wasn't nursing, I was just, but while I was putting the baby to sleep, I was going through some of the questions and I took a couple of screenshots. So let's see how I did. Oh, okay, did the afteries help this time around? Uh, yes, as I've shared previously, this is my second time using the after ease. That helps with the postpartum after pains when your uterus is contracting, trying to get back down to pre-pregnancy size. Um, the first couple of days postpartum, you're going to, your uterus, when it contracts, when you nurse, it releases a hormone, oxytocin, and it uh, promotes your uterus to contract. And sometimes those contractions can be just as painful as actual contractions, and they get uh, more uncomfortable than with each passing child that you have. So I took the after ease tincture. I got it from Amazon. It used to be like 12 bucks. Now it's real gross. It's like 25 bucks. Speaking of gross, it doesn't taste great. It's a tincture. It's like an herbal supplement, but I just dilute it in a little bit of water and then I down it real quick. I think I took it every 12 hours just for the first couple of days. And I definitely noticed a difference. I didn't take any ibuprofen or anything else and I was totally fine which is awesome because I feel like after my third, I didn't have anything. I mean, they offered, they actually offered Percocet, I'm pretty sure, which is crazy. Um, I think I did take an ibuprofen, but even with the ibuprofen, I was like, oh my gosh, these are intense. So I got the herbal supplement after I had my fourth, nothing. And then after this time around, I feel like I felt it and then I took, um, the after ease and I was like, this is incredible, it's incredible. I would recommend it. I know people have differing opinions about it, so there's my opinion. Speaking of products that you can use uh, postpartum, the Freedom Mom kit, holy crap, you guys, I know I've raved about it before. The ice packs, way better than the ice packs you get in the hospital. I feel like they're colder. I feel like they're more comfortable. I feel like they stay cold longer. Incredible. The, um, the Perry bottle, genius. Genius, genius, it's so good. Way better than the Perry bottle they give you at the hospital. You might think $12 on a Perry bottle, I'll get one for free at the hospital. If you have the expendable income, I would suggest getting the Perry bottle for $12. It's just so ergonomic. The flow of the water that comes out of it is just so special. It feels better. Oh, it's just so lovely. So highly recommend what else did they have? Oh, the underwear that comes with it, top quality. Top notch, grade A, amazing. I Some hospitals have like the nice thicker mesh panties. I would say some hospitals, but I delivered at the same hospital I delivered at last time and they gave me like the cheaper version, you know, like the hairnet version. 
not my fave, but also it's fine, it works. But uh, the Freedom Mom ones, top notch. Again, amazing. What else do they have? Oh, the, um, they have like some foam, perineal foam, that's okay. They have the Witch Hazel pads. Those are nice because they actually, like they're the size of the pad, so you just grab one and put it on your pad and it's cool. The Tux pad, they do the same thing as the Tux pads. I actually enjoy the smell of the Tux pad and Dermo Blast more than the smell of the Freedom Mom stuff. But, <laughs> so I use both. But um, I think like the Freedom Mom Witch Hazel pads were harder to get out of the package. And plus the package made so much noise. I kept thinking, I'm gonna wake the baby getting these out. So I did use the Tux pads. Uh, they're fine. They're, I actually like them. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else comes in the Freedom Mom like postpartum kit that I have. It was nice having that whole thing by my toilet. I think that's it. I don't think, I, I can't think of anything else, but I would definitely recommend getting that as a gift for yourself or for anyone else postpartum. Okay, does the newborn stage get easier with each child? Absolutely not. Nope. It, I would argue it gets harder because, you know, after I had my first, I, it was all consuming. Oh, the baby's asleep. Oh, I can watch a movie or whatever. No, the baby's asleep. Okay, let me try to put him down so that I could, you know, do a million things with the other kids. Thankfully, I have Alex and, you know, he does a lot. He helps out a lot, but we have no other help. That's another thing postpartum, help. What? Do people have people who come over and help them, take care of them? I thought, is someone going to take care of me? The answer to that is no. <laughs> that was hard for me postpartum this time around. Uh, like, is someone gonna make me breakfast? No. So I do things to help myself uh, postpartum. So like freezer meals or, you know, meal prep. I meal prepped a few breakfasts the other day and that it really is helpful. I can wake up and actually eat a nutritious meal that doesn't include an oatmeal packet. I you. You, I can only eat oatmeal so many times in a row before I go a little crazy. But Alex is great. He just, he's, he doesn't cook. <laughs> he tries his best. But uh, that's one thing, like food. And make sure you nourish your body. Make sure you drink a lot of water. I got questions about breastfeeding. I'm not an expert in any stretch of the imagination about breastfeeding. But um, I do know that breast milk is like, I don't know, something like 98% water. Make sure you stay hydrated and eat enough calories. It could be easy postpartum, especially if you have multiple kids running around, to forget about mom, to forget about yourself because you're, we're so busy taking care of everyone else. Make sure you eat, myself included. I have to remind myself, I need to eat. Make sure you are nourishing your body because your body, if you're breastfeeding, is taking care of another human being. And so that's really important. And then also hydrate. I think the rule of thumb for breastfeeding is every time you sit down and have a nursing session, you uh, down an entire, I don't know, 16 ounces of water, an entire bottle of water. So that will definitely help. If you have issues with your supply, try that. I know some women, they just have issues with their supply. That's okay. If you're doing your best, uh, reach out to a lactation consult, a lactation consultant. There should be one at the hospital for you. They're all around. A La Leche League should be in your area. You can find one. If not, reach out to someone online. And I'm sure there are a ton of resources online too for whatever issue you may be having uh, with breastfeeding. I know there are, are a whole host of issues that could happen when you're breastfeeding because there is so much involved chapped nipples, bleeding nipples. Oh, that's fun. Um, I extend breastfeed with my kids, so I don't have that problem. The first time around, I um, didn't experience any kind of like pain. If you're having pain, see a lactation consultant, maybe the latch can be adjusted. Maybe, you know, they have all kinds of things like uh, nipple shields and stuff. So it could help your baby if they have a tongue tie, if they have certain things going on. That also affects how they're latching too. So there's a lot more involved than you would think. And there are so many issues I couldn't even begin to touch on all of them. But um, yeah, I know a lot of people struggle with, am I producing enough milk? Um, well, so it's a supply and demand thing. If your baby is nursing, your body should be producing enough for your baby. Um, but again, 
there are a lot of things that can happen and just find support. Okay, but the newborn stage in general, oh my gosh, it's so hard. They, they just wake up all the time, you know, for different reasons. They wake up because, I thought that thing was moving. <laughs> it's not. They wake up be, for, I don't know, they're uncomfortable. They're, oh, and it, there are different newborn cries. If you don't know, I'll hopefully try to link it below. There is a video that Oprah did with the, some expert, some woman who can tell you about the different childhood cries, not childhood cries, newborn cries. There are like four of them and they sound slightly different. If you know what to listen for, you can kind of tell, oh, my baby is crying because they're hungry. They make like a ne ne sound. Or if they're uncomfortable or if they are tired, it sounds more like, oh, uh, I don't know. Watch the video, it's very enlightening. Um, it, yeah, that's something I didn't know until like, three babies in. Okay, how are you doing? Uh, are you healing well physically, mentally, and emotionally? Mm, good question. Physically, I'm doing well. I had my checkup today. Everything looked good. Um, I have a hemorrhoid for the first time in my life. This is my fifth baby. I've never gotten a hemorrhoid before. And it wasn't even because of birth. I got it like a week ago. I don't, it was really weird. Is that TMI probably, but here we are. Good thing I have all the postpartum equipment to deal with it. I don't know, it's just really weird. Uh, and then emotionally, I'm all over the place. The first couple of weeks were a roller coaster of emotions. Basically, after you give birth, you birth the placenta, and that's like the hormone powerhouse, right? So you're getting rid of that in your body. So there's a huge hormonal dip. Actually, there's a huge spike of oxytocin right after you deliver. It's the happy hormone, it makes you like euphoric, you forget it. People ask, how did you walk so nonchalantly from the shower to the bed? I don't feel anything, you don't feel anything. You're just like in that state of euphoria you know, adrenaline is rushing and the oxytocin and all that good stuff. So um, after, anyway, so after the huge rush of oxytocin, there's a massive dip in your hormones and that happens a couple of days postpartum. And then your body works really hard to try to stable those hormones out. And that's basically the first couple of weeks postpartum where they call it the baby blues, where you might be having a lot of like influx in your emotions. And I feel like that's normal. Um, for me, this time around was much harder because I looked at Wolfgang and I would just cry. I cried more this postpartum than I did with all of them combined. I don't really remember crying a lot with any of them. Maybe my first, because I was like overwhelmed and <laughs> just, it was a lot. I feel like I may have had postpartum depression fully with my first, but Again, it could have been circumstantial because I, I just didn't know what I was doing. I had no one to help me or guide me other than the books that I was reading. And oh my gosh, uh, you know, those books. You can never live up to anyone else's. You have to find your own way. You have to find out what works for you and your family and your baby. And that can be really challenging. So this time postpartum, I also feel like it's circumstantial with my emotions because he's our last baby. And I just kept thinking, I'm never going to bring a baby home before, I'm gonna cry. I'm never gonna bring a baby home again. Not before. And I'm, you know, never going to hold a newborn like this. I'm never going to breastfeed a newborn like this again. I, like, th this baby will never, I'll, I just, it's so hard to wrap my head around. And I remember there being one day that I didn't take any pictures of Wolfgang, and I just kept thinking, oh my, like the next day I thought, what did he look like yesterday? <laughs> it seems so ridiculous, but uh, you know, those are my emotions. And eventually I just had to start lying to myself thinking we could have another one. Every time Alex would bring up like getting a vasectomy because that is our plan, I'd say, I don't, I think you should wait. <laughs> like I just can't mentally process it yet. Uh, he, but this does have to be our fifth and final for so many reasons. But the fact that he is our fifth and final brings up a lot of emotions for me. So I just have to um, just hold off on, on processing it all, all at once, and just kind of enjoy the newborn time, even though it's, I say enjoy. There are so many beautiful sides to having a newborn, but then also so many challenging things as well. So I'm just trying to do the best I can, really, with life, you know? So that's how I'm doing postpartum. The Freedom Mom products help. 
I'm, I think they sell a, a postpartum gummy too. Actually, I'm taking the hair skin nails one and the postpartum pooping ones. Those were great, the stool softeners. And then they had another one that I, oh, oh, for lactation. Yeah, all three of them, fantastic. Would recommend all three of them. Someone asked me about hair loss postpartum. That I think that typically happens when you're a few months in and then your hair starts to fall out in clumps. And the logic behind that is when you're pregnant, you don't lose hair. So then when you're postpartum, you like make up for lost time. But I know some people experience a lot of hair loss and I didn't with my first, or I didn't notice, probably I didn't notice. With my second, I noticed. I had like hair, handfuls of hair. And I know some people can take biotin, and I'd say start taking that right away if that's something that you wanna do. I'm taking the hair skin nail gummies. I feel like that's good enough, I don't know. Came in a kit, so I'm taking it. And eating a proper diet, that helps too, with basically everything, physical and emotional. Just eat a proper diet. I mean, less than what's proper because when I'm breastfeeding, I'm craving all of the carbs, all of the sugar, and I don't deprive myself, so of course I'm like eating it all. But then also dairy-free, so am I eating it all? I didn't have one piece following candy. Here's your time to feel bad for me, okay? <laughs> Since I'm eating dairy-free uh, sugar and all that good stuff, uh, I also try to add in. So I never like take away, I, I try to add into my diet as much as I can. Drink more water, eat more vegetables, eat more fruit, and uh, that should help some things, but will it? And also if you're struggling postpartum, don't hesitate to talk to, to anyone about it. Talk to your friend about it, talk to a healthcare professional about it, but also do your research. Ooh, I really struggled with sharing my body with my baby after birth. My son basically lived on top of me for the first six months of life, breastfeeding, baby wearing, co-sleeping 24 seven, and it was hard for me to always put his needs first. How do you do that? And for the fifth time, you are amazing. Oh, uh, wow. That, so that's one of the reasons this will be our fifth. It is such a selfless thing to have a baby. I mean, oh, it is all consuming and it is, it takes a lot. And being touched out is a very real thing, whether you have a newborn or not. Some people with toddlers feel touched out because you're just needed. You're needed. They, they just love you so much. That baby loves you so much. Those kids love you so much. And that's what it, sometimes I'll uh, be venting to Alex and he'll just be like, it's because they love you so much. <laughs> and it just puts it into perspective. Yes, they do. And they will not be little forever. And that's hard to process and realize when you're in the moment, you're like, oh, you know? But uh, it's true. And it's a lot. And it's challenging. And you're not alone because I get touched out. Heck yeah, that's why I'm trying to put the baby down as much as I can. But then I've got, you know, four other kids to deal with and sleeping, baby wearing, all of that stuff. Uh, even pregnancy for me, if pregnancy is so hard for me too. And I told Alex, like, I'm tapping out. I, just, I don't know if I can go through this again because it is, it's a lot. I don't know how else to explain it. It's, if you're in it and you have those feelings and emotions, they are valid and you're not alone in those, have, thinking those things. You know, for so many reasons, this will be our last. Okay, I can't find it, but, oh, okay. When I had my fifth, it was super hard to get back into the rhythm of life. You seem so motivated and energetic just weeks after having your fifth baby. How do you do it? Uh, <laughs> lack of choices, <laughs> okay. I don't know, I feel like a lot of it too is just shifting your mindset, shifting your perspective of like, I get to have five kids. Like for me, that's what I tell myself, I get to have five kids, I get to take care of them. Isn't this just a blessing? And when things are hard, sometimes I envision, but I don't think about the future a lot. That's, I leave that to Alex. He's real good about doing that. A lot of times we'll be sitting on the couch just saying nothing and he'll look at me and say, when we're 80 and then go on this whole thing, I'm like, why are you even thinking about being 80 years old or whatever, so, okay, anyway. So when I'm having a hard time, and first of all, first of all, there's a quote, and I'll share it with you before I forget, something along the lines of, you know, when you're having a hard day with the kids or whatever, your kids aren't trying to give you a hard time, they're having a hard time. And it's, you know, our responsibilities to help them through that. Kids are running around out back, so <laughs> trying not to get distracted from them. What was I saying? Oh, when I'm having a hard day, because I have so many kids and it, because it is all consuming and I think 
Am I spending enough time with each and every one of them? Which is also one of the reasons why this needs to be our fifth because oh my gosh, it's so hard to spend special individualized time with each of them and make sure they're getting, you know, that time with us, Alex and I, we try really hard to prioritize that kind of thing. And you know, other things fall to the wayside. My cleaning videos, I get comments like, how do you let your house get messy? First of all, Judy, calm down. But also, <laughs> because I don't prioritize that. I prioritize my kids and them having a good childhood and having fun and spending time with them over cleaning. So sometimes the laundry falls, the dishes fall. And back when I had one kid, oh my gosh, if I went to bed with dishes in the sink, good Lord, hell froze over kind of moment. But now dishes in the sink and I'm tired, good night. Okay, hold on, what was the thought that I was saying? Oh gosh, lost it, oh. I don't remember, but getting back into the rhythm of life after having a fifth, I think it just kind of, like having everyone else gives me a push. Like, no, I didn't get to sit in bed and uh, do nothing, heal and recover, which do that if you totally can. But you know, I have to get my kids up and ready for school and make them lunches and breakfast and all that good stuff and make dinner and try to make things convenient for yourself if you can. So like Lunchables, or made for a reason <laughs> and freezer meals prep those and you know the convenience items that some people have opinions about they're there for a reason and to help us out and just oh that's what i was saying okay so when i'm having a hard time did i even finish that i'm having a hard time i think of the future no i didn't finish this i think of the future and i think of all of our kids around thanksgiving dinner or like sunday dinners when all the kids come home with their families and what that looks like and having everyone around the dinner table what does that look like because alex and i have always wanted a large family and so i think of that like what is this going to look like you know 10 years from now 20 years from now and hopefully it is a beautiful thing it is in my mind <laughs> so check back on me okay okay about like jumping back into life too i don't know for me i just you just gotta do it <laughs> no, there's no other option as moms a lot of responsibilities fall on our shoulders we got the weight of the world right here and just deal with it the best you can and that's really it and every, you know everyone has different levels of productivity and some days i struggle with that too because i'm like oh i have this long list of things that i need to do and i only got to two of them but guess what i still got to two of them and one of them is the most important thing keeping your newborn alive, keeping your kids, you know, healthy, happy, that kind of thing. And at the end of the day, I just tell myself, did you do your best? And if not, you have tomorrow, hopefully, to do better. And I'm just always trying to be better. And maybe that's a character flaw. Also, being super productive is a character flaw. <laughs> Some people are like, how are you doing X, Y, Z? And you're only, you know, so many days, weeks postpartum. It, it's a character flaw, really. My family, um, we have this thing that's called, we don't sleep and we are always doing something. <laughs> and it's a blessing and a curse because I, I don't sit and rest very well, which is what I should have been do doing, which is what you should do postpartum. Um, I just, I don't do that very well. But everyone's different, okay? And I'm just trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to make sure, ooh, I'm in different season of life and I have two teenagers that are involved in multiple, multiple sports and activities. Oh, what are some of the things you've learned to let go of? I think I touched on that. It is hard. Okay, so I'll talk about like having one kid versus five and what's easier, kind of like talking about the transition because I got a lot of questions about that. When I had three kids, um, you know, all three of them were under six years old when I had a newborn. I had a newborn, three-year-old, six-year-old. That was easy as pie. I feel like, you know, but as they get older, they get in more after school activities and their lives are more demanding and they need to go to, you know, Julie's on the weekend and Matthew has a birthday party and oh my gosh, all our calendar. <laughs> if I showed you our calendar, you'd be like overwhelmed with everything. Every day has something. Every day has something planned and activities and sports and all the things that we want our kids to be involved in. 
that they are interested in, but also it's very time consuming for us as parents to keep up with all of it, but uh, we do our best. Alex is super great at keeping on top of the calendar, way better than I am. Like We'll go through it every night before the next day, like, okay, what does tomorrow look like or next week look like? And um, yeah, so that's something that helps keeping a running calendar and sometimes something will happen and you know, we'll look at each other and be like, that wasn't on the calendar or something wasn't put on the calendar or we'll forget about something and it'll be like, we didn't put it on the calendar. So that keeps us in check. And also just knowing that this season of life is not gonna last forever. Like my kids, I'm not gonna have a newborn and a 12 year old forever. Eventually that will level out and they'll get older and then I'll have kids in college and maybe one in kindergarten. <laughs> I haven't done the math yet. I'm sure Alex has, but oh my gosh, we're gonna have, someone in college. I mean, she's in sixth grade right now, but before you know it, blink of an eye, you guys. Isn't that the truth? It's like the hardest thing for me to come to terms with too. I'm like, <gasps> that's one, also one of the reasons where it's like fifth and final because we have a newborn and then a 12 year old. Well, like in 10 years, we think in 10 years, she could be having a child. We could be grandparents. We can't have, have a six year old and be grandparents or whatever, whatever the math is, but you get my logic. It's, Oh, you guys, it's a lot, okay? It's a lot. Oh, smell him twice for me. I love the smell of newborns, you guys. It's true, like, what is that smell? Bottle it up. I love it so much. I also kind of feel like it's their sweat. It's like sometimes I can smell it on his neck and I'm like, mmm, love that. <laughs> okay, so I feel like I need to elaborate. Is the newborn, does it, okay. Does the newborn stage get easier? Uh, no, but also, yes. <laughs> because I feel like as I go through it each time, I get more experience as with anything in life, the more experience you have, the better you are at it, theoretically. Um, so you learn tips and tricks along the way. Whereas like with my first, I didn't know, I didn't know <laughs> a lot of things. So let's say even putting them to sleep, which he's kind of ready for sleep, the best way to get him ready, oh hi. Well, I don't, I'm not sure he's ready for sleep, but let's pretend, shall we? And then I'll show you how to put my wrap on because I get a lot of questions about it. So as far as sleep goes, a little tip, a little trick, I don't know, maybe it'll help you. When I had my first, I literally got like hardly any advice, but one person came over once and get, offered me advice about gas. Like every time she would be fussy, I would just feed her because I thought she was hungry and um, this one person was like, oh, maybe it's gas and you're supposed to, you know, like rub their tummy a certain way, put their legs in and out, their hips, you can move them in a certain way. There's like baby massages to do that are really helpful for um, babies with gas. But like when you're putting them to sleep, we're swaddled. We have white noise on. We're trying to recreate, well, I don't have it on right now, trying to recreate the womb for them, so loud white noise, a nice snug swaddle because they're swaddled. They like to suck on something, so a binky, and then like motion because when they're in the womb, they're moving all the time if the mom is moving all the time. And you know, a rocking motion, maybe it's gentle, maybe it's not so <laughs> gentle. Sometimes um, the snoo, one of the reasons it's so popular because it, like, is it goes back and forth you know, in a motion like this, and it's pretty intense. Um, a padding reminds them of the mommy's heartbeat. So it's like little things like that. Some of them are innate, like the padding, and some of them you learn through little tidbits. <laughs> so I hope that's helpful. All right, he seems to be doing okay. So I'm gonna show you how to put my wrap on. And the video I watched was like, oh, how to get your baby to fall asleep in two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, maybe if you have an angel baby. Sleep is like the hardest thing to get newborns to do. Okay, so a wrap, let's do it. Okay, the baby just spit up all over me. We'll ignore that for a minute, if you can even see it. So the wrap that I have, first of all, I love baby wearing. It saves me with so much. Babies just love you so much, right? So they wanna be close to you. They want to smell you and feel you and hear you. So the reason I love this Boppy Fit Comfy Carrier, Boppy Fit, no, Boppy Comfy Fit Carrier. 
Love baby wearing. Hands free while the baby is calm, hopefully. Um, I love this one because it is kind of like a hybrid with the buckle carrier, so it's super easy to adjust. I buckle it around, put him on like a normal buckle carrier. Also, it's affordable on Amazon. I wanna say it's like 40, 50 bucks or something. And then it just has little armholes. You throw your arms straight in it. And then it's kind of like a wrap where you wrap it around yourself, crisscross, applesauce, turn it around, crisscross up here, under the feet, and then tie it in the back again. A knot, double knot, is that a double knot? And then it's nice and snug. And it's so easy to adjust, it's crazy. A lot of the buckle carriers for me, I felt like were hard to get in the right spot. And it's easy if I'm out with him and he needs to nurse, I just lower it and nurse him. And it's just, it's so simple. And he loves it. Babies just love to be baby worn in general because again, gives them that support that they like, that snugness. So, yep, there it is. And now I'm hands free to go about my day. Yay, okay. Hey, there's also one more thing that I wanted to add. Um, if you're postpartum and you're feeling like you don't have anyone to help you, because I know some people have that, a lot of people have that situation. I know we have that situation. And um, I wanted to suggest hiring a postpartum doula. It's basically a doula who's there to help you with literally whatever you need. I know maybe some may be different, let me know if he spits up everywhere. Um, <laughs> some may be different, but they're literally there for you, to support you, to help you, however that may look like. Does that look like getting groceries for you? Does that look like playing with the bigger kids while you sit and nurse the newborn? Does that look like you know holding the newborn at night while you sleep, <laughs> you know, does that look like feeding the newborn? Whatever that looks like, postpartum doulas are amazing and I know not a lot of people know about them, um, I don't know how much they cost. I'm sure they are pricey because the service they provide is priceless. Uh, but it's worth looking into if you're interested in something like that because I know they could provide companionship as well because I know, you know, the newborn phase can be lonely and isolating and uh, in a lot of aspects. So just know someone can be there for you if you need them. Okay? You say hi? Say hi to our friends. Don't spit up on them. Oh, one more thing about visitors. That's something that I forgot to touch on. Visitors, I feel like I started talking about it. The baby, visitors come for the baby. Oh yeah, let's get riled up again for a second. What about the mom? What about the mom? It's like once you have the baby, everyone just forgets about the mom. The mom needs food. If you're gonna go visit someone postpartum, bring food, bring something, bring a gift for the older kid, bring something to help them, bring a gift card for her to get a massage. <laughs> I don't know, bring something that she's interested in. Uh, mostly food, that will be very helpful. I feel like when visitors come, they're very quick to like, oh, can I hold the baby? <laughs> I don't know, like, it's nice that they're offering to hold the baby. If the baby's sleeping and like, oh, do you need to shower? Or, but what really is a better question is, oh, can I fold your laundry <laughs> for you? Oh, can I do your dishes? Oh, can I make you a meal? <laughs> Food. Can I get that point across enough? Um, so yeah, visitors, that's the thing. Oh man, we've had some visitors. I could tell you some stories, but I'm not saying a word, not a single oh. word. <laughs> Are you smiling back there? We can't even see you. But along the lines of visitors, I would say don't be a people pleaser. I know that's hard for some of us, <clears throat> myself included. Alex is really good about, <coughs> oh, I just ate a chocolate covered almond, which was another question. Postpart postpartum snacks, I found these dairy free Cho Himalayan salted chocolate covered almonds, dark chocolate, so it's dairy free, it's so good. Anyway, um, Alex is really good about like, okay, time to leave, <laughs> or whatever. He's good about confront confrontation. I'm not, I don't know. I'm, I'm very much a people pleaser in every aspect of the word, but um, try not to be. Like, if you need to rest, go rest. If you need to eat something, if you need to go in a different room with the baby, you go do that. 
don't feel like you have to entertain the visitors. That's one thing that I felt like I needed to do when I had my first slash second slash um, I still feel that way. <laughs> they should be there for you and the baby, of course. Everyone wants to see a newborn. It's not every day you get to see a chunky little sweetie, squishy little newborn because they're the best. And there's a reason why they're the best because everybody loves a baby. Yeah. How are you so big? Like, how did this... Yeah, you. How did this fit? How did it fit? I just don't even know. Okay, that is all. I think I touched on everything that I could touch on. You guys, thank you so much for being there for me and supporting me and like really helping me through this. You guys are always just so sweet in the comment section and so encouraging and so supportive and I am so thankful for you because postpartum can be really tough and you guys have been my friends through it. I tell Alex, oh like Alex is my best friend, but then I have you guys too, which is really nice. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I don't know how to end this. There's a fly flying around. Some days are hard and challenging. And at the end of the day, Alex and I will be like, today was a hard day. <laughs> Maybe without the laughter, we'll say it. Oh my gosh, the bottoms of my feet are hurting. But I hope I was able to like help you guys out postpartum or give you some kind of advice. I don't know. If nothing else, I would, you know, thanks for spending time with me. <laughs> That's something that helps me postpartum is like, you know, feeling like I'm hanging out with a friend when I'm watching YouTube. So I hope that I was that for you. I hope I was a friend for you right now. If you need some time, is it 5 a.m. and you woke up with the baby? Yep, that happens to me too. That's exactly why, as a matter of fact, that is why I post at 6.30 in the morning Eastern Standard Time because when, I think when I had Meredith, I woke up at like five, which I kind of enjoy waking up at five. Did it this morning, actually was it 4.30, who the heck knows. And um, I enjoy like that little bit of time while I'm nursing before I have to like, you know, start with the rigmarole of the day. So anyway, I, I watched YouTube videos. So thanks for being there for me. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I don't know. Did I say anything? Was this, this helpful? Was it? I don't know. What day is it? <laughs>